I was in the Air Force. I was in for three years. Active duty Army and then National Guard. I was a corpsman, which is a medic. I served in the Army and also in the National Guard. Well, from a little girl, I was always fascinated with the military. Like anything on TV that was the military, um, it might sound kind of weird. I mean, I'm not that old. Um, but I remember watching, you know, shows like MASH, like shows like that. They really even fascinated me. I just love everything about the military. Because I couldn't go to, I could not go to college. I, I know that that was the next best thing for me to do, and so it paid off. When I got out of high school, um, I didn't really have a direction, and the military gave me a pretty good direction on where to go, and I had the option when I joined to either be an aviation electronics uh, technician or a corpsman or a nuclear go on the subs and stuff and I was like no no submarines and they told me about the, the corpsman where I was a medic and did stuff like that and I, so I chose that and uh, it just was a good fit I did well in it. I think I gained uh, more self-confidence in, in my ability to handle situations because I was an officer, I was responsible for, for people underneath me. I, when we went into exercises and, and even when it was, when real world situations come up, I was part of the um, medical command post, the MCC, the Medical Communication Center. So I guess one of the things I really take from the military is the same thing I guess some people take from college is the connection you make with some of the people, right? Um, you're not gonna like all the people all the time, right? It's just the way that it kind of works. But you really make these friendships and you've asked this other person to put their life in your hands and their, you know, and vice versa. Um, and to be able to trust somebody that level, it's, you know, that you're really first for a lot of these kids, well, I guess almost all of us, was our first real serious growing up experience. Definitely just life skills. Um, <clears throat> you mean, you learn things like first day, you know, how to, you know, treat wounds um, in the moment's notice, you know, without thinking about it. If somebody's not breathing, somebody's bleeding, have a broken bone, you know, you know how to treat that. You also learn skills like how to think fast on your feet, how to improvise, and to just like figure out what to do in a moment's notice. I want to say one of the more interesting stories that people like to hear was um, I was a good buddy of mine, Kyle, that we literally met in the Oklahoma City Airport on our way to basic training. He was from Chicago, I was from Illinois. We we're both a couple years older than everybody else. I was like 20, he was 21. One of the things I've been, I really liked to do at the time was go rappelling, right? You find a cliff and you run down face first and you'd be all kinds of crazy. Um, and Oklahoma's pretty flat. <laughs> like there's not a lot of places to do stuff like that. And as we were driving around, we found this really cool, like almost like a, a fault line where it was a big cliff and it came down. I was like, I bet you we could go rappel over there, but there was no trees to tie off on. So we took his brand new Jeep Cherokee and drove all the way up there with, another, with somebody else that we had at the time. And we tie off to the underneath side of this Jeep and we rappel down this cliff several times. I find a place that's quick to walk up and we do it. And, and we had a good time and it was a little different. I've never done that before. But then come to find out the next day, um, Geronimo, you know, the oh, jumping out of a plane, Geronimo kind of guy, the Indian, he was caught and held at Fort Seal, and we didn't know this. Um, and then apparently the story comes, he escaped the jail, stole a horse, and took off running. And now the army's chasing him. Blah, blah, blah. And he rides up this cliff and literally rides off this cliff. And that's where the story comes from, from Geronimo and jumping off. And apparently it is illegal to rappel down those cliffs. So I think the Statue of Limitations is probably up by now. But uh, uh, yeah, it was uh, something that it's one of those neat little stories that people kind of, especially students like to hear when you talk about, you know, your past life and things like that. We had an open house um, where the where the Thunderbirds came. They're the the squadron of pilots that take their airplanes and show the public the intense 
maneuvers that, right. that they can do. And at the end of the, the show, everybody was left and we're cleaning up the flight line and a thunderstorm started. And there's lightning and everybody was instructed to be off the flight line and we hear over the radio that somebody from the transportation squadron, somebody from the transportation, <laughs> is out there with a forklift on the flight line. <laughs> Anyway, it was kind of funny because, like, how can we help somebody who is putting themselves into being electrocuted? <laughs> like, yeah, okay, the ambulance, we're still out here, but, you know, we're not looking for patients. <laughs> one, of the, one of the instances was um, uh, at 29 Palms out in California. We were at a training in, uh, out there, and uh, while well, I was stationed out there, with them, I was deployed with the explosive ordnance disposal team out there, and our daily routine was to drive around the bases to designated bases and look for uh, ordnance that hadn't been exploded or, you know, whatever. And then they would also take with them out there uh, ammunition that needed to be destroyed or whatever they were getting that day. One day we were out there doing that, and it didn't go as planned and one of the big f bombs that was full of uh, white phosphorus uh, it was sitting there and it was weeping which means uh, it had smoke coming out of it it didn't blow up in the initial explosion that they had set so we sat there and observed it for quite a while and um, the lead technician uh, deemed that it was not going to do anything so they were going to go put another charge on it and finish it off. Well, they had me sit back in the truck while they went up there and they got about, I don't know, about 25 yards, 30 yards away from, from the uh, munitions and, and it decided at that time it was going to blow up. So they were coated and they had white phosphorus on them, white phosphorus burns and everything. And um, I was, that morning I had, I had, uh, knew I was going out with them and I we just got a new shipment in of cupric sulfate which was a, is one of the treatments for white phosphorus and stuff so, and I just happened to grab a couple bottles of that throw it in my medic bag I didn't I didn't normally carry it and that day I took it with me and uh, thank God I had it with me because that's the activating agent that it basically coats the white phosphorus and keeps it from burning so I was able to treat those Marines and uh, both of them went back to active duty after, you know, rehab and extensive stuff, but, uh, you know, both of those guys lived that uh, I helped that day. Actually, both times that I served in the National Guard, um, I definitely had an opportunity to serve the community, which is the reason that's why the National Guard is there. Um, I experienced a hurricane. Um, when I was in the National Guard back home in St. Croix, I believe it was Hurricane Marilyn, and this was in 1995. And as the National Guard, we were activated and we were all, you know, called to go to the armory and we had to have ourselves positioned and stationed and ready to um, go out and rescue people. I was actually in an MP unit at the time. So, you know, we were part of, you know, search and rescue, making sure people were safe and if they were stuck at home. Um, making sure they can get out if they needed to get to medical attention that we would do that for them. So being able to serve the community like that because I know you know as the military we tend to look at the foreign but you know being able to serve domestically within the community it really gave me a sense of pride to be able to serve the community. There's always harassing back between the, between the units but I think when it comes down to it all the armed forces are equally appreciated and equally um, needed. They all serve different roles and without any one, one of those roles not being filled, then the whole mission doesn't happen. It's like the limbs on our body, you know, our body functions, but it all helps us, it helps us all to live and to survive. So we are many members fitly working together to complete the mission. And you make some of these really deep friendships with some of these people that you would never think would last as long as they do. And I've been out of the military, so almost 20 full years now. Um, and I still talk to a few of these guys all the time, right? It's, it's a weird situation. You wouldn't think our lives are completely different. We live in different parts of the country, but the closeness that you develop with these people, the of things that they ask you are, are really eye-opening for 
somebody that young.